Um, so while you were also in your master's program, you were a student intern at the CDC. So do you want yeah. to tell us about that experience? Yeah, so I, I had the opportunity to go to Guatemala, the CDC Global AIDS program station there. And when I got there, I was assigned. That was cool also because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Spanish speaking and, you know, I got to go to Guatemala. And I was, like I mentioned, I was interested in global health at first. And, and so that was, that was a great opportunity. I was assigned some data sets for HIV AIDS patients and mortality and other, and other things. And I was told to analyze them and, you know, just give a very straightforward task. And so I diligently went ahead and started doing that, uploaded it into my R. And I noticed very quickly that a lot of the key, a lot of values, like half of the values approximately for many of the important fields, variables were missing. And I was like, wait, what? This is like for an important report, you know, like uh, I think looking five years back and like half the data is getting missing, like are the confidence intervals going to be like this big? Like, how's this going to work? And I realized that this must be happening all the time. And it must be happening everywhere. And that was just a realization, you know, just sitting there before that. I'm realizing, you know, it's not like this, it's not like this is the first time it's happened. This must happen everywhere. And this has clear implications for, for decision makers. And, you know, you don't have the, the, the information, you know, the best information that you need. You know, a lot of it's missing. So you're going to make suboptimal decisions. And so it has a huge impact. And that's when I, I just think this whole like train of like thoughts came to me and, and at the same, so I'm thinking uh, that's sitting with me. And then, uh, soon after, you know, within a week or two, I'm at, I, they, they, they asked me if I could confirm that their translation, their Spanish to English translation for a report is accurate. And so I'm reading this report in Spanish and it said, I think there were like five uh, of the seven countries in the report were basically, you know, they were surveyed on what their most important needs are. And I believe it was like five of the seven countries in Central America. Um, that's an approximation. I may be off on the number of countries, but the, the majority of the countries that had reported said that informatics is their top priority, their top need. And um, so of course, I'm thinking like, you know, what am I going to do, right? Public health is immense. Um, and so I'm, I'm wondering what, what is going to be my specialty. And I had just seen the term informatics somewhere. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking about all this. And I'm like, okay, well, all these, I obviously want to focus where the, you know, like I mentioned, my, I have a lot of skill where I can do a lot, but also where there's the greatest need. And so and that that way having the greatest impact and so that's how i decided to go into informatics uh you know just to apply my i mentioned my technical skills uh for something that a lot of countries are saying is their top need and that's what got me into informatics and that's what kind of got me into looking into more of that in in the more opportunities in that field and so yeah that that was the the guatemala experience i can mention what happened when i came back yeah, please do. So when I got back from Guatemala, I looked into, I knew that my, my previous infectious disease epi teacher was very involved in informatics. He was actually the lead developer. He was actually the CDC lead developer for epi info. You've heard of epi info? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so that was, you know, I think it was the nineties that first came out. But he was he was the the lead person for it. so Epi Info One like he was the guy, and and so he was my previous teacher again. So I reached out to him and I said, hey, I'd like to do you know like an informatics course with you of some kind. There's nothing again. This is ten years ago. There's nothing informatics data science is not popular, and I you know I said I want to do you know something with informatics. Could we do like a independent? Uh, I forget what the term is. Independent study. And he said, and he said, yeah, he agreed to it. And we, got, we went through the approval process to get it approved as a legitimate course. And it was just one on one. And it was, it was a great experience. Looking back, I, I didn't take as much advantage of it as I should have. 
but it was still, you know, I still learned a lot there. And so what he introduced me to was a lot of the, the web technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And my project there, he had a website called openepi.com, which is still live. And he, he, he was trying to move it, move some of that to the cloud. And so to Amazon specifically. And so that was my project. And, and a little bit after the course ended, I, I figured out this one like last detail that we needed. And I, I let him know about that. So that was helpful. Uh, and it was about a private API key. At, the, at this point, you know, I didn't know anything about API keys. Now they're very common in tech. But that, uh, yeah, it basically, I was able to store things onto the Amazon Web Services um, from using like a, a little page. Like you, you put this file here, you click the button. Okay, now it's an Amazon Web Services. And, you know, I can download it now. And so that was my first... Um, yeah, experience with this web stuff, which is, you know, just that alone is, is really helpful. And, and yeah, I, I learned a lot through that and, and yeah, and he was, he was one of the people that I reached out to help recommend me to the AFIF program later. That, that's amazing. And I can imagine how formative that must have been learning about more of this info, in, in, informatics work in um in Guatemala and then coming back and having this opportunity to work with this this real like expert who has been doing this work has led a lot of uh, cool work uh, while you're also building more technical skills as well yeah and and I, and I it, guess like look I, I was gonna mention I one of the reasons I said that I didn't take as much advantage of it as I should have was because you know, we would just chat about things sometimes. And he was telling me that he would, t I remember when he told me that his son, his son worked at Google and he would, t he told me, yeah, my son, they did, Google just gave him like 10,000 computers to try to, to do some machine learning stuff and see if they can classify a cat. Like they just gave him a bunch of YouTube videos. So like he just has access to YouTube and he seeing if he can, if the algorithm can like detect cats. And I was just like, what, what is this? this what, what is, it? okay, that's <laughs> odd, but okay. And it, you know, it's only years later that I find out that it was actually really important work that he was ascribing to me. I, I knew nothing about machine learning at this point. And yeah, that, that was actually a, like a seminal paper that came out uh, because it was an algorithm that but the, the fact that it was successful was showed that you didn't need to be able to, you didn't need to give a computer, um, you didn't need to tell it, this is a cat. Here's another video, this is a cat. They just gave it a bunch of videos of all these things and it learned what a cat was. And so that was, uh, yeah, it, it was really cool work. And I, I really should have dug in more at that time to find out more about all this stuff. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that as well. And I think that's a note to anyone out there that's working with someone that's doing some really cool work in the field, like really, treasure that time and, and use it and, and really push as much as, and learn as much as you can. Yeah. 